Here are the video solutions for AQA Functional Skills Maths Level 1. This is paper 2 which is the calculator paper and this is from January 2020. So question number 1, which of the following is a net of a cube? Okay, well I suppose you just need to imagine that you're doing origami with all of these shapes and see if you can imagine whether or not it can fold into a cube. But for me, I always remember that the net of a cube is 4 squares in a line with one square on the left hand side and one square on the right hand side. So they could both be here or they could, they can be anywhere on the left and anywhere on the right. They don't need to be directly opposite each other as long as one is on the left and one is on the right. And we can see that we've got that in D. Four in a row, one's on the left and one is on the right. So D is the net of a cube. Question number two, calculate 52 squared. Well, 52 squared means 52 times by 52 and that comes to 2704, assuming you're using your calculator, of course. Number three, how many lines of symmetry does a hexagon have? Okay, well, there's one line of symmetry right through the middle of those sides, um, so therefore there'll also be a similar line of symmetry right through the middle of those two sides, and again there. We've also got lines of symmetry going from corner to opposite corner, so one, two, another three there, so in total that is six lines of symmetry. Okay, so a fair ordinary six-sided dice is rolled, write down the probability that it lands on a number greater than four, so not four, greater than four, so that is a five and a six. So there's two possibilities out of six, so that is two out of six, or we can simplify that to one third. Both answers are equally fine. Question number five is very difficult for me to demonstrate. We need to measure this using a protractor. Uh, just estimating it though, I can see that it is greater than 90 degrees. It's an obtuse angle, so it's got to be between, uh, uh, it's got to be between 90 degrees and 180. It's closer to 90 um, than 180, so I would probably guess it's about 120-ish. Uh, but if you measure it, it should be about uh, 130, in fact. But anything between 180 degrees and 132 uh, degrees is um, acceptable here. Work out the number of minutes in seven days. Well, first of all, how many hours are in seven days? There's 24 hours in a day, so seven times by 24 is 168 hours. We know that there are 60 hours, uh, 60 minutes in an hour. So 168 times by 60 equals uh, 10,080 minutes. Question number seven, if I'm putting these fractions in order, rather than um, changing the fractions so that they have similar numbers on the bottom, I would just turn them into uh, percentages. So remember to turn a fraction into a percentage, it's top divided by bottom times by 100. So that is 70%. Three divided by four times by 100 is 75%, or hopefully you just recognize three quarters of 75%. Two divided by three times by 100, that is 66.6 .6 recurring percent. So the smallest is this one here, so that is the two thirds. Then seven tenths, and finally the largest is the three quarters. Question number eight, we want to work out the mean. So to work out the mean, we need the total. So 4 plus 12 plus 10 plus 13 plus 4 plus 6 plus 14, which comes to 63. And we're dividing that by the number of numbers. So in this case, we're dividing by 7. 63 divided by 7 is 9. So the mean is 9. OK, on to section B and question number 9. So first of all, we know that um, she's worked 26 hours at her normal rate of pay. Her normal rate of pay is £9.65. So how much has she earned during these 26 hours? That's going to be 26 times by £9.65. And that comes to a total of £250.90. So she works 30 hours in total. So she's done 26 at the normal rate. Therefore, she's done 30, take away 26, which is four hours at the um, at the other rate, which was double the rate. So it's gonna be four lots of whatever two times 96, nine pound 65 is. So nine pound 65 multiplied by two, we're just working out the rate of pay here for the, um, for the bank holiday, and that is 19 pounds 30. 
So these four hours are going to be £19.30. So four lots of £19.30 comes to uh, £77.20. So her, so I should probably put the zero on the end there as well. So her total pay is just going to be the £77.77.20 plus the uh, £250.90. And that comes to a total of uh, £328.10. OK, moving on to B. So first of all, we need to work out the number of hours Zach has done. So 5 to 9, that is 4 hours. 3 to 6 is 3 hours. And 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., that is 4 hours. So the total number of hours is 4 plus 3 plus 4, which is 11 hours of work. And he's paid 8 to 10 an hour. So 11 multiplied by £8.10. That comes to £89.10. Was he paid more than £90 per week? No. Let me just scroll down a little bit because £89.10 is less than £90. Okay, so for part C, there's um, probably the easiest way to think of this is if he keeps 85%, then that means he gives Vicky 15% because 100%, the full amount, take away 85% is 15%. So we just need to work out 15% of £23.80. Now, most students I work with will probably be hesitant to pick up a calculator and will probably try and work out 10% mentally and 5% mentally and chuck them together. But it's so much easier if you multiply the 23.80 by 0 0.15. So this is the calculation we need. 0 0.15 times 23.80. We're just using the percentage multiplier for 15%, which is the decimal equivalent. In other words, 15 divided by 100. And 0 0.15 multiplied by 23.80 is £3.57. So that is how much he has given to Vicky. Okay, so Zach is um, saving £35 per week. So how many 35s go into 185? In other words, what is 185 divided by £35? 185 divided by 35 is 5.28. So it's gonna take him 5.28 weeks, which kind of doesn't really make sense um, because presumably it's just at the end of the week that he saved the money. Anyway, uh, if it's 5.28, we need to be careful. It's closer to five weeks than six weeks, but if he's only saved five lots of 35, then that's not enough to buy the keyboard. So here we're gonna have to round it up to six weeks. So here the answer is simply six weeks. Okay, number 10. So what we need to do is work out the area of um, the garden, which is 15 multiplied by 7.2. 15 times by 7.2 um, is 108 square meters. Now Beth only wants to cover one third of it, so what is a third of 108 square meters? 108 divided by three, uh, that is uh, 36 square meters. It's two pounds 75 per square meter, so for 36 it's gonna be 36 lots of two pounds 75, and 36 times two pounds 75 is exactly 99 pounds. Okay, so for this question, I'm just gonna work out the volume of the water, which is these three dimensions multiplied together. So 1.8 times 2.5 times by 1.2, and that comes to 5.4 cubic meters. Now we know that a cubic meter is 1,000 liters. So when we're converting from cubic meters to liters, we are multiplying by 1,000. So 5.4 multiplied by 1,000, is 5,400 liters. A fish needs 360 liters, so how many 360 liters are there in 5,400? Well, the calculation will therefore be 5,400 divided by 360, and that comes to exactly 15, so that is 15 fish that can be kept. Okay, so for this question, we know that it's buy one, get one half price. So if Beth is buying six rose bushes, then there'll be three full price and three half price. Okay, so um, half price is gonna be 13 pounds 50 divided by two, which is six pounds 75. So it's gonna be three at the full price, so three times 13.50 plus three at the half price, so three times six pounds 75. 3 times 13.50 is 40 pounds 50p. 
and three times six seventy five is uh, twenty pounds twenty five and if I add those two together I get sixty pounds and seventy five p. Okay, so for question number eleven we need to um, draw these um, items on this um, grid here. Now we know the scale is one centimeter represents two meters. So um, how many two meters go into six meters? Well, that is uh, three. So this is going to be three centimeters by two meters divided by two meters by one. So if we just divide all of these by two, then we're converting it into, into the centimeters. So this is gonna be a two by two, and this is going to be a three by 1.5. Okay, so looking at the rectangular food stores, so that's gonna be three centimeters by one, so three by one, there we go, there's one uh, food store, I'll just put FS for food store. Uh, we need at least two meters of space between the stalls, so that is one centimeter on the grid, so I can do another food store here. And here is my third food stall. So there we go, I've done my, my three three by ones. I need two two by twos. So uh, there's two by two, and there is another two by two. And what were these called again? These were the foods. Oh, these were the oh, the square food stalls. Okay, all right. So uh, two more food stalls. Um, and finally, we want one drink stall, which is a three by one point five. So uh, one, two, three, one, one point five. There we go. And this is my drinks stall. So there we have it. Um, so we can see that they're all pl plotted correctly. I've got the right number. I've got three of the rectangular ones. I've got two square ones and one rectangular drink stall. And I've got at least two meters space between them. In fact, I could have spread them out a bit more because there's plenty of available space still. But um, so there are several possibilities here, uh, but this one here is as good as any um, as they all fit in perfectly. And there's the requisite number of space between each stall. So we are done. Okay, on to part B. So if the um, tickets are 20% off, what this means is you pay 80%. So we need to work out 80% of 55 pounds. So the calculation for this is 0 0.8 times by 55. Um, you, might want to pref you might prefer to see this as 0 0.80, so you can see the link between the percentage amount and the percentage multiplier. This percentage multiplier is just the decimal equivalent. It's 80 divided by 100. And of course that zero doesn't need to be there, but 0 0.8 multiplied by 55 is 44 pounds. So this is the cost of the ticket once 20% has been knocked off. So if 20% has been knocked off, that means it's 80% of the original value. So three tickets is gonna be 44 times by three and 44 times by three is 132 pounds. So if the concert's starting at 7.30, and we want 30 minutes to check the tickets then, I just need, just need to subtract 30 minutes from uh, 7.30, so that will take me to 7 p.m. And then just subtract another 40 minutes for the food and drink purposes, uh, purchases, so 7 p.m., go back 40 minutes, that takes me to 6.20 p.m. There we go, so 6.20 p.m., done. Okay, on to question number 12. Um, okay, my least favorite type of question where I have to draw a graph. Um, I'm gonna do a bar chart for this. So along the bottom, I am gonna have um, April, May, June, and July. I'll just put J-U-N and J-U-L. Actually, make it a bit more obvious that these are months, I suppose. So we can make the title here months. Um, was it just the four months? Oh no, August and September. Um, so this one here is going to be April, this one here is going to be May, June, July, okay so here is August and here is September. So I'm going to do bars that are all exactly the same width and the gap between all the bars will is also consistent. Now other side we've got temperature so I'll just label that ac uh, axis as temperature and that is in degrees Celsius. So we need to have a think about this. We need the minimum of uh, 16 and a maximum of 18. So that is um, gonna be, that's a difference of 12. Have I got 12 or 
maybe have I got 24 available squares? No, I don't have 24, so I'm, I'm just gonna go up in ones. Uh, but I'm gonna start not at 16, uh, I'm gonna start at, um, let's start at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, I uh, can't remember, I, I need to go up to 28. 28, I'll go just a bit above it. Um, there's many ways you could do the scale actually. You could have started on perhaps 14 and then um, just labeled um, every second one. So 14, 16, 18, 20. Doesn't really matter to be honest. Anyway, April needs to go up to 16. So you can see that by starting at 15, that means I'm at least able to draw in a bar for April. Whereas if I'd started at 16, that would have just been completely flat and might have been a bit uh, not obvious what the valley was supposed to be. Uh, May goes up to 20. Right, I'm just gonna do the tops of the bars to begin with. So uh, 25, then 28. So the next one is 25, then 28, 27, and then 24. Sorry, I'm doing this as a bit of a shortcut. I mean, maybe it would have been a good idea to do each bar individually. So uh, I've just done the, the tops of the bars there. So using a pencil and ruler, which I'm not, which means mine will look a bit scruffy to say the least. In fact, that one was particularly terrible. And there we go. We've pretty much got our bar chart sorted. Okay, and there we have it. So if you are doing a bar chart, and you know, don't have to do a bar chart, you could do um, um, a line graph or perhaps a line bar chart. Um, the key thing is that the, the widths of all the bars are consistent. So here it's just one big square across and the gaps in between are also equal as well. Um, I shaded in the April one, so I should probably shade all of them in, but you don't need to do any shading. But that is um, our bar chart. There we go. So make sure the axes are labeled. Make sure you're going up uh, consistently, so not going 15, 16, 18, 20, or anything silly like that. Um, and give your axes titles. So just the basics, really. There we go. Right, 11B. Uh, Jack wants to travel on the 12th of July, so we are interested in these figures here and staying for 14 nights. Okay, so that is gonna be 760 pounds. Um, can he afford to upgrade to all-inclusive? Well, that is um, 21.50 per person per night. Um, it's just Jack on his own. So on top of this, I, it's gonna be 21.50 multiplied by 14. And 21 times, um, 21.50 times by 14 is 301. So 760 plus 301, that comes to 1,061 pounds. He's got 1,100 pounds, so yes, he can afford it. 1,100 is greater than 1,061, so yes, he can afford it. Okay, question number six. So we know the conversion rate is one pound equals 7.38 Turkish Lira. So if we're converting from pounds to Turkish Lira, we are multiplying by 7.38, so therefore if we're going in the other direction, we are dividing by 7.38. So, I want to convert 6,500 Turkish Lira into pounds, so I'm gonna divide that by 7.38, and what do I get? I get uh, 880.75, um, so to the nearest pound, I'm interested in the value of the first decimal place, which is greater than five, so that will round up to 881. Okay, part D, a question about probability. What's the probability that the flight will be delayed by at least one hour? So we're not including the less than one hour because that is not at least one hour, so it's eight plus three, which is 11, out of a total number of 60 flights. So there we go, that is the probability. Just check to see if this fraction can be simplified, um, which it can't because 11 is a prime number and um, 11 doesn't go into 60. So 11 sixtieths. And that takes us to the end of the test.